now. Goody. So, welcome to this week. Let's see if I can get this going. Um, this is, I already am messing up. <laughs> this is, uh, how I gotta say, Living Our Truth, uh, week three. And it's about emotional programming and what we're gonna do about it. So last time we talked about what emotions mean. And I'm gonna clarify this a little bit. I am going to say, it's not really what they mean. It's more of what information does this elicit when we have a thought, essentially. Uh, we have thoughts because we're reacting to some stimulus, right? And so if our thought and our reaction to the stimulus is anger, it means I believe I've been trespassed against. So I wanted to tease it out a little bit more. Or if, um, if we have a, a stimulus and then we have a thought and then our reaction is hurtfulness, then that message is I believe I have been mistreated. Um, so I hope that's clear. Uh, it's not that, you know, the energy comes to us, you know, whole on hog is anger, unless, of course, you know, clearly we're picking it up from somebody else. So it's generally what the meaning, what the message of the thought is. So um, this week, <laughs> we're going to talk about our emotional programming, and we're going to get a little Freudian, I'm so sorry. Um, and we're going to look at our childhoods, but I don't want to look at it with a microscope. I want to look at it with um, just sort of the idea of, hmm, that might make sense. And this is about the energy of our, um, of our programming, of our, um, our reactions. For example, some people, when somebody yells at them, They'll do one thing, yell back. Other people, they shrink in and they hide. Those both are programming uh, that we received when we were little and we learned that's what we do when this happens. There's all kinds of programming, all, all kinds of programming. But what we're going to focus on today and what will help us the most will be programming about, let me see, how can I explain it? Uh, programming about when what our brain wants disagrees what our knee-jerk reactions are. I hope that's clear. Um, uh, some people call it li limiting programming, limiting beliefs. Some people call it um, uh, blocks to whatever you want. But basically, in a nutshell, what it turns out to be is like when we have learned to do something a certain way, uh, learned to react to stimuli in a certain way, our programming kind of kicks into auto autoplay. You know, like when it used to be on Facebook, whenever you scrolled, it autoplay with noise. And so they changed that. So we can change it too. Good. So I'm going to pull up my notes and there we go. And so how do people become programmed? Well, uh, the first answer is, when we have our recorders on between age zero and say seven. That's the easiest way to program us. So all the crap that happens to us when, our kid, when we're a kid, a little kid, goes in there and becomes programming. Um, also, <laughs> it can be negative programming, which is kind of interesting. It can turn into, God is my witness, I shall never become my mother. <laughs> it can turn into that. But essentially what it, turns into is we learn how to be human from other humans when we're babies. Actually, we learn how to be primates from other primates when we're babies, which is why humans can raise primates as babies, because we're basically the same thing. So um, we're going to do a little what ifs. What if there's something we really want and we can't figure out what's stopping us? Yeah, it's very frustrating, isn't it? So if there's something we want or something we don't want and we can't figure out what's stopping us, or we can't figure out why we are reacting in a certain way. 
the quickest and easiest way to go there is to understand that there might be a dissonance between what your brain knows and what your unconscious expects and then what your soul is crying for. It's those three things are not in alignment and that's the only reason you're not getting what you want or you're getting a lot of what you don't want. And that's it. Um, how do we get this way? How do we become misaligned? Well, remember we went back and, and we talked about our very, very sensitive physicalities? Our very sensitive physicalities, i.e. this highly sensitive personality, this thing that, that absorbs things from other people? Well, in order to not feel this pain that we're feeling from the person that we've displeased, we do everything we can to please them. I mean, it's, it's like we're natural pleasers. That's the natural mindset of a highly sensitive person. We really, really, really don't like to feel the pain of causing somebody else displeasure. Unless, of course, we're mad. And then we want to, no, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> totally kidding on that one. But you get what I'm saying that um, highly sensitive people know when people are upset with them and it feels bad. So, um, like all good organisms, we go away from things that we don't like rather than towards things we do like. But that's the general thing. It's like we'll shrink back from hot things. We'll go away from icky people. It's, it's, uh, it's the normal thing to do. Now, how do we change this normal thing to do of bending ourselves to want to help people or uh, cutting off a little piece of, you know, pleasing people? Well, that's kind of cool. And this is where we get into the woo-woo stuff. And it's going to be really fun. I'm going to lead you in some record, uh, into some uh, meditations this week to be able to really feel what's right and what's wrong, what's good or what's bad, what's, um, what belongs or what doesn't belong. That's what this week is all about is, you know, this, the Sesame Street level. One of these things is not like the other. Or actually, all of them could be not like the other. But I'm going to take you through some meditations that are just amazingly effective. Okay? And what we're going to find is where our pleaser thing, where this thing goes, ah, must not hurt people, and see how really deeply ingrained it is. And also where this... Um, uh, the trigger of I don't feel safe, all the triggers. We're going to talk about a lot of triggers first. So we have a number of triggers. The first trigger is I've made this person unhappy. I must do everything I can to get that feeling out of me, which translates to pleasing the other person. That's one trigger. Another trigger is I don't feel safe. And when I don't feel safe, that means I must do everything I can to control and organize the world around me. I must see what everybody is doing. I must check and make sure what's going on. And another trigger is I'm very frustrated and I'm not getting what I want. So therefore, I will strike out at anybody I see because I am angry and upset. That's it. These are all babies, all childlike ways of being. Um, another trigger that is important for us is I am overwhelmed and I feel like I need to shut down. That's a big one. Um, and then if you, if you ignore that one, I'm overwhelmed and I feel like I need to shut down and keep going. Eventually it becomes, I am overwhelmed and I must be numb. I can't, I'm not allowed to feel anything. I'm full on numb. And that is a dangerous space to be in. Sorry, it just is. We're not going to deal with that level of, of overwhelm. We're going to deal with the level of overwhelm we were talking about earlier, how you can focus on one thing and shut out the other stuff. We don't want any overwhelm to get to the level of must shut down. Okay? So um, type in chat if you have any other triggers you want to talk about. Okay, that is if 
you want to, and if you don't, that's fine too. So um, if you don't know where the chat is, it's down on the bottom uh, under chat. <laughs> okay, good. So those are the triggers we're going to be working with, the major triggers about, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm not getting what I want. Um, I am removing what I really want in order to please somebody else. I don't feel safe and I must control my world around me. And I am overwhelmed and I feel like I need to shut down. Those are the main four triggers that we need to focus on in order, you know, there's millions of them, but those are the ones that really, really get us where we're going. So the first exercise is going to be the grounding exercise. And um, some people know this one very well, but it is, um, it's very helpful. And I'm going to send you, yeah, that's a good one, Maggie, maybe feeling trapped and needing to run or lash out. That is, um, that is a very adjacent, very similar feeling to um, I'm frustrated, I need to lash out too. So the feeling trapped is the, um, is the caged animal trigger. And that is um, also part of the pleasing trigger, which is interesting because people who don't care about pleasing other people don't really, <laughs> don't really get trapped, you know? <laughs> They don't get trapped at all. And I think it's hilarious, you know, because they don't care what you think about. They don't care how you feel about them. You know, they're going to say, screw you and the horse you rode in on and walk away. So no, you, it's only people who need to please other people that get trapped. Right. So I'm going to go through this exercise. And it's an exercise for grounding. And it can be done any time you might feel a little scattered or frazzled. I've done it on airplanes and in shopping centers, and I've done it when I've been stuck in traffic. I've done it when I've been in crowds. Um, it's, it's very, very useful. And the reason we need to be grounded is because we are bioelectrical energetic systems. You know, everything is energy. And so what happens is, is our bioelectrical, this physicality of the system um, becomes overloaded or it can become um uh i guess the word is overloaded because our nerves will generate electrical impulses and our muscles um, function from electrical impulses and um our hearts create electromagnetic uh, vortexes around our bodies and it can be so large that it can be measured up to 12 feet from our bodies and so all the information that comes from the outside and all the information that comes from the inside all becomes electrical and what this thing does is it it helps us from shorting out it keeps us from shorting out so um I know this is weird, but I want everybody to stand up. This is easiest way to do this exercise and to feel the exercise is to do it standing. So um, put down your computers or your iPhones and just listen. And um, stand up and close your eyes and take a breath. And I'd like you to stand with your feet um, hip distance apart and take a nice deep belly breath like we talked about before. The in one, two, three, four and then hold two, three, and then exhale. Very good. Now exhale every little bit of that breath. Inhale again, and as you inhale, lift your shoulders up and squeeze them around your ears. And then as you exhale, drop your shoulders back down. Now I'd like you to imagine an infinite cord it can be any kind of cord. I usually use an electrical cord, but it can be a silken rope. It can be anything. And it's coiled in your abdominal cavity. And the cord is going to drop through a trap door in your pelvic floor at the count of three. One, two, three. There you go. Drop your cord and drop it down, 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 all the way to the center of the earth. 
And when your cord connects, you might feel yourself rocking back on your heels. That's a sign that you've connected. And you can feel the excess energy that was trapped in your belly or in your shoulders just draining down. I like to call it my electrical disposal. And what happens is it feeds and helps the Earth's energy. Now, for the final part, imagine you're standing on the shores of an ocean and you can feel your feet in the sand and the waves are pulling and flowing around your ankles. Breathe in and the wave flows up. Exhale and you can feel the waves pulling as the water drops your feet down into the sand. And then quietly, quietly stand and breathe. There we go. You can sit down and relax and take notes if you're taking notes now. I hope that was a successful meditation for you. It's one of my favorites. Eventually you'll be able to put that on a shortcut. And for me, I'm very elegant, eloquent, so it's always Sally to ground. But <laughs> the more you do it, the more you can create a shortcut for it. Um, you can do a hand signal where you just put yourself to the ground. And you can do um, uh, anything you need to do. That is such an amazing, instantaneous dropper of tension. That's another one of the amazing tricks and tools. And literally, like I said, it can be done anywhere. And here's an indicator that it needs to have to be done. You feel things escalating. Um, and this is what I mean, like things just, you know, one thing after another, after another, just turning up the volume in your heart, in the, the pressure, the tension, and you feel it escalating higher and higher and higher. And then you go, oh, I'm not grounded. <laughs> I can do my grounding exercise and I'm going to be sending an MP3 and you can put it on your phone. Boom, three minutes, you're done. You're down. It's, it's, it's so wonderful. You know, use your, use your phone and your earbuds. Um, so that's going to be, that exercise is going to be part of tomorrow's email of this video as well. And I'm, I'm, I sent, the videos to YouTube, by the way, so you're going to be able to like bookmark it and keep them forever. They're all private and they'll be there forever. They'll always be yours. Um, so that's a good one. Yay. Huh. So now we're going to start with the next step. Now that we have, have know what it feels like to be attached to the earth and we've lowered our tension levels. Our very next one is what has been called the heart space exercise, but I want to change it to the mountaintop exercise. And some of you may know this and some of you may not, but it's one of my favorite ways of turning off my brain. Um, there are many, 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 many ways up the mountain, which is why I call it the mountaintop exercise. <laughs> this one, I do not have a recording for, but I will make a recording if you, if you need it. Uh, just, you can either email me or text me or tell me in chat after we've finished if you feel like we need it. So for this one, you can be seated or stand up. It doesn't matter. And I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine that you are standing on top of your personal mountain. It's an amazing view. And you can feel the love of this mountain. You can feel how much you enjoy this view. But as you look down this mountain, you will notice 
down in the valley that you are looking at, there is a place that feels like your special place. You may notice water glinting in the sun. It may just be a smudgy area of trees. It might be a little village. It doesn't matter. It's your perfect special place. Now, imagine that you can instantly go there. You can just close your eyes and dream travel right down to that spot. If you need some help, spread your wings and fly there. Or you can take a gondola, get on a gondola that will take you right to that place. If you have taken the gondola, step out of the gondola to your own special place. When you find that place, I'd like you to notice all that you can notice about that space. I'd like you to feel how sounds have changed. And I'd like you to notice how still and quiet the world feels. So for everybody who may be having trouble, I'm going to take my energy and we're going to stand upon the top of the mountain and we are going to see our special, special place. And I'm going to take your heart and your mind and put them there in that space. And there we go. So I'd like you to sit back and notice that the sounds that reach your mind seem quieter, that you may feel a little sinky, spready feeling. That's very nice. So while we're there, and during this time, the rest of our journey is to discover the truth in our body is based upon our being in this place and being attached to our earth. So if you feel yourself pop away because you start thinking and using starting this engine in your head, then quietly ask your body to sink back down to that space in the mountain. So the first journey of discovery that we're going to do, I'm waiting till the guides tell me which one they want me to do first. We want you to be able to see your life along a river. Ah, the timelines. Oh, I love this one. So if you feel like you're having a problem visualizing it, imagine your life unfolding um, on a line graph, on a bar graph, if that helps, and you can do a slider back and forth, or you can imagine uh, it's the pages of a book and can flip through. But any way possible, imagine that you have control to see all along the line that is your lifetime, forward and back, because there is no time. So here is our question. You ask yourself, where is the space where I learned this thing I would like to unlearn? Remember, we started out talking about our blocks to getting what we want. Where did I receive this programming about how to react to certain trigger situations? So close your eyes and ask your mind and your heart to show you a space, a picture, or alternatively, if you don't see well, feel in your body. It could be, a lot of people are feeling it in their stomachs, their, their, their small intestines. I'm feeling some tension there. <laughs> Good. 
So notice that. Notice where, where you are storing your programming. You may feel twinges in your low back. You may feel twinges in between your shoulder blades. Ah, somebody's got one in the hip. Ah, yes. Um, just notice those things. Those are the places where you are storing emotional programming that your soul and your conscious mind have chosen to release, but your body is keeping it. It's as simple as that. Once you've discovered, pick one. We can't, you know, hit too many balls out of the park. We're going to pick one to do this exercise. So imagine that you can become very small and go right to that space and just go, huh, what do I notice about this thing? Do I get little flashes of, of moments? I mean, do I see something that happened and as God is my witness, I will never allow this to happen again? Or is it merely just a hazy ball? Is it merely just this throbbing thing that I'm noticing that I don't care for? Either way is perfect. And it could just be that you can feel where the edges are of it and not see the edges. So let's see if you can circumscribe the area where this thing is. You know, become detached like it's a foreign object you'd like to discover because that's exactly what it is. So walk around it, see if you can find the edges where it is and where it isn't. See if you can go above it and find out where it ends below as well. Turn it into just a thing that is. I'll give you a minute to understand that there's a space where it is and where you are and they're different. Good. Now here's where the magic starts. Notice that with your mind, you can ask this thing to get very, very, very small. It's not so big anymore. Make it smaller and smaller and more and more condensed. And as it becomes condensed, it becomes a lot less overwhelming. It just becomes more of an is that you want to become an isn't. Now, we're going to treat this thing that has served us so well with love and compassion. I know some of you are very inclined to want to, you know, throw it in the air and whack it with a baseball bat, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to ask it, does it have any other connections in our bodies? And if it does, you'll feel another part of your body light up. Ask that connection to join with this little ball or somehow point, you know, you connect them yourself and push them together. I'll wait while you do that. So are there any other parts that match this part? And if that's the case and you've collected as many as you choose to collect, oh, I'm sensing that there's more to collect. <laughs> I'll wait a second. There's a little more to connect and collect. Uh, there's a lot in, in the, like the pelvis, the low area, low part of the sacral area I'm feeling. There's, it's vibrating for me. Okay. Yes, we have identified and collected. Now, imagine you're reeling in, just reel it in, all the long threads that are connected. Reel them into your ball, because you're in charge. That's right, collect them all together, 
all together, every single, ouch, it hurts. Yes, let it hurt. Don't notice the pain, just let it hurt. Keep collecting, collecting. Whew. Good. I'll wait a second while you reel them in because some of them are tight. Don't force them. Don't force them. Some of them are tight. That's good. And when they're all together, we're going to say to them, I am so sorry. I have held you captive for so long. Please forgive me. I forgive any pain you may have caused me and I forgive any ideas that I have held because of you. Remember that. You must forgive the ideas as well as the pain of this thing. Completely let it go. I also forgive any other people that this feeling may be attached to. Yeah, that's a hard one. And I tell them, thank you for teaching me this valuable, valuable lesson. It's just so valuable. Yeah, let that one settle for a second. Because this lesson affected us so much that it, it must have been a valuable lesson. Ah, and the very last thing is we send all the love we possibly can to this moment, to those spaces, to the every little thing. We love it so much because in our love, it cannot withstand the power of love. And with that love, it will transmute and lift and rise out of our bodies. So you just love it so it just... That's the really amazing thing about love. It is the most powerful force in the universe. Nothing of a lower vibration can withstand it. It just, it, it can't happen. So we are sending such love to that space that it can be released. And we are offering it to become zero point energy, either to stay with us or to go somewhere else. Yeah, allow it to steam away. Uh, still feeling some tension in my stomach. Let's not fight with it. Let's not engage with it. If you feel yourself engaging, then I'd like you to step back from it. Don't fall into the pit of it. Just step back. And we'll go to our next way of clearing. But if you were successful of releasing and allowing this space to become just pure energy, because that's all it is. It's just energy. It's just thoughts. It's just moments. It's just ideas. And it can go at any time. Because what we are shifting is the programming behind the thought. So the thought has to go first. And then the program can go. Good. I'm still feeling a little pain in my intestines. So let's step away and we'll go on to the next exercise. If you like to, uh, we can uh, debrief a little bit on that one because there is some still pain right here. Somebody may have been having problems. You can, you can talk about it in chat and I'll answer a question right now. Anybody need to do that? I'll wait a second before moving on. Okay. Because as you know, just click on the chat and let it go. Were you successful? Did you feel that that was successful? You can... Um, I'm not going to unmute you because I might catch you unawares, but if you want to chat, you can chat. Good. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next way of, good, 
um, we're going to go on to the next way of releasing things. Remember our grounding. To remember that infinite chord. Let's focus on that grounding chord one more time. So if we've lost our chord or we need to redo it, I'll do a little short one right now. Imagine an infinite chord inside your abdomen. Allow that chord to drop deep, 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 deep into the earth. And now here's the twist. Find that chord. Find the top, but not the bottom. And create a hole in that cord. Just make it a hole, a tube, and not just a cord. Very good. So now that you have that tube there, notice that you can just sweep stuff into it very, very easily, sweep it in. So anything that was stuck or didn't feel right or you didn't want to go to, any dust or debris left over from what you've done, you know, you can take a leaf blower, you can take a vacuum cleaner, you can take whatever you want in your stomach and anything that doesn't feel right. You don't have to see it. You don't have to know what it is. It doesn't matter. We're vacuuming. We're sweeping. We're cleaning up the dust. So you guys have fun. Vacuum your stomachs, vacuum your, your throat. Don't forget the back of your head. If you want to get in your brain, feel free. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a minute to have fun with the vacuum cleaner before we move on. Because then we're going to look again at our timelines in another way when you're finished vacuuming. Very good. That's a really fun game. Teach it to your daughters. It's a wonderful fun game to teach to your daughters. Boys might like it too, but usually daughters are much more interested in doing weird stuff with their mothers than <laughs> sons. But you never know. Okay, we're going to go back and look at our timelines in a different way. Okay. So the, um, the best way to look at our timelines in a different way. Okay. What do you want us to do? I'm checking. What do you want us to do? Ah, we are taking a ball of energy. We're going to take um, like a, a thought or idea. Uh, it's not going to be a moment that we want. It's going to be the energy of a moment past. Yes, energy of a moment past. So I'd like you to find an energy of a moment past that's still needling at you a bit. Um, either it was a conversation you had with somebody that didn't work out, or it was a time maybe somebody hurt your feelings, or it was a time um, when, you know, that's still bugging you. Okay, so get that. Together, good. Now, this is where it's really cool. So you have an idea that there's a bump there. Now keep that bump in mind, but look in another direction. We're gonna go up and reestablish the timeline and get huge distance from it. Good. So, um, Yeah, they, my guide said, slow down, slow down, and they can't go as fast as you. Okay, good. <laughs> How are we going to do this? Imagine you are standing on an open plain, and before you and behind you is your life experiences. You're just on this wide open plain. And there is a platform that rises higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. There it goes, rises higher and higher and higher. And you can look down upon the plane. Now ask yourself, what does that moment look like that I was just thinking of? And you'll notice it's a little bump 
it's a little unevenness in your plane. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's how I do it. That's how I see what's going on in your lives. I get above your lives and I see the bumps. Sometimes you might be looking like the Rocky Mountains down there, but if you're, if you're good, you're only going to ask for one incident at a time because you can get overwhelmed if you see too much. So if a lot of it's coming in, say, no, I only want to think about that one thing. I want to see where it is. Good. Get higher and higher. Uh, some people have gone into their brains. Let's sink down back into heart space. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sink into that special spot. Breathe. Okay. There you go. Now, let's take the idea of the high on the platform. And if you're a person who doesn't visualize well, then imagine you're a blind person reading a smooth sheet of paper and you find the bumps of Braille. Or if you're a person that only feels um, tension or no tension, reach your little tendrils out to find an area that isn't letting you go through it easily, where there's a resistance. Very good. You can feel where the resistances are. But if you can see, you can see that it's a bump. Or if you feel, you can feel it's a bump. And if you want to reach for it, you can notice a pressure, back pressure. Good. Now, what do we do about that? We just smooth it. Just smooth it. If it's a braille bump, you give it some love and say, I love you and I let you go. Goodbye. If it's an it's a, it's a eyesight bump, it's like you're smoothing a sheet. And, you know, making a bed is an act of love. So you're smoothing a sheet. Very good. And if you feel the resistance, blow it away with love. Just blow it. Oh, that's good. Now that you know this trick, ask for other moments that could be released. And notice how they'll, they'll volunteer. They just come right up. They volunteer. And just smooth it as you did before. Very good. And release it and allow it to settle and smooth. I want that plane to be wide open, nothing. Very good. Like you're standing on the salt flats, just wide open spaces. And if you see the tiniest bump, smooth it out with love. Say, thank you. You're free to go. Very good. All right. Now that you're smoothing the area and you have a smooth area, toss in a word. Let's use guides. Do you want a word? Yeah, we're going to use one that isn't so, so triggering. We're going to use disdain. Toss in a word and notice if it activates in your body. And notice if it echoes in the plane. Because here's the interesting thing. When we absorb other people's stuff, remember, it's because there's a similar vibration within us. That, you know, we're the boom cars. We're the windows of walking through in the boom cars. So we'll throw out words and see where it's going to pick it up in our bodies. Very good. Now, if you notice that this thing vibrates in your body in a certain place or in a certain way, what do you I'm mean, you meaning your soul, the space of your heart, choose to do about it. You say, well, that just doesn't fit, doesn't it? One of these things is not like the other. And if you feel that this thing doesn't fit, open the door and let it go. Tell it you love it and it's, it's free to, you're, you're excused now. Thank you for your service. Goodbye. 
You want to pick out another word that isn't such a trigger? How about... They're saying grief and sadness. You guys want to go there? We can go grief and sadness. All right. Let's find where grief go. Ooh. Yeah, that, that one hurts. And you can feel the vibration of grief in your body. And if you need to, you can go up on your platform away from the vibration. I know it's a mixing of a thing, but, you know, take yourself to your place and then go up on the platform or go high if you can. If you need to get into a, the basket of a balloon and go really high, that's okay too. And see where the bump is. And smooth it and let it go. That one is, um, that one's hard. I'm thinking we need to do some walking around on that one. So find the vibration of where the grief is in your body. There's quite a bit of it, isn't there? Everybody carries some. And walk around it. Find out where it is and where it isn't, just like we did before. That's nice. And when we walk around it, we notice that we are separate from that energy. That energy is not us. It is merely energy. And that makes it easier for us to let it go and say, thank you. You made me who I am, and I love you for that. But right now I'm ready for you to go. That's very good. Wow, you guys are brave. Wow. Whew. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was good. Mm. Wow. There's still a little <laughs> fallout. Let's breathe. And this is a perfect time to introduce the, the idea of flotsam and jetsam. I want everybody to look around with their eyes closed and see their field and notice that there's still some floating debris in it <laughs> and ask it to go away. <laughs> ask it to go away. Really, truly. Very good. Now that we've gotten the idea of, of clearing things out, Let's talk about creating what we do want and creating new programming and knowing how this can settle. Because, you know, as you know, if you don't clear out your drawers, you can't put more in or your closet or whatever metaphor you want to do. So that's what we're doing. We're cleaning out space in our... Um, Actually, it's, it's actually literally held in the code of our DNA, you know, because there's DNA in every cell. <laughs> yeah, I know it's really hard to, to take that one in, but it, it really is. And we're actually shifting and changing and releasing these things in the code of our DNA. And we would like to write something different. Okay. I want everybody to create in their minds... One thing, not a huge, big laundry list, just one thing, one thing, wouldn't it be cool if, just one, wouldn't it be cool if, and only one. I want you to build it like it is absolutely already here. Okay? Uh, be able to reach out and touch it. Be able to smell it. I mean, hug it, squeeze it. Do whatever you need to do with it. Make it real. You know, bang on it. And if it can be banged on, <laughs> I mean, if it's a human, don't bang on the human. But you know what I mean. Just walk around this wouldn't it be nice if moment and have it be real. Good. Now feel the energy of that real thing. Notice that you can feel it. 
really feel the energy of that real thing. And notice how cool that energy feels and how much it wants to be part of your body. It really wants to get in there, doesn't it? So by all means, let it come in. Fill in the spaces that we cleared out with much higher vibrations. Now here's a way to check to see if it arrived. Imagine that you're looking at a picture of this thing. If you, in your mind's eye, if you open your eyes, then close your eyes and see the picture. If the picture is directly in front of you, right in front of your face, then yes, it came in. If it's off to one side or far in the distance, then it's not as part of your body. So if it's off to the left, that means you love it and you just know it'll come there. If it's off to the right, that's kind of like you don't believe it can come. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. Right is, you know, making up a story. Left is my love. We all do it. And if it's far, far in the distance, but directly in front of you, you know it's coming, but you're just, you don't trust yourself to have it. So here's what you do. In your mind's eye, reach your very, very long hand and pull it closer to you. And if it comes... Cool. Now here's the check. Let it go and see if it snaps back. If it snaps back, then there's another block still. Isn't that neat? And we can, you can redo that exercise we just previously did and find other blocks to it. Because you can get up on your mountain and say, if I were to see the block to getting this thing, what would I see? Is that not the coolest thing? That is so freaking cool. That is manifesting one-on-one in the easiest way possible. So if it didn't snap back, woohoo! If it did snap back, you know there's still some more work to do. If it's off to your left and you want it to center, ask it to come to center because it's ready to be there. If it's off to your right, there's a good chance it'll snap back because there's some work that still needs to be done in here. Okay? That's really cool. I like the way that one felt. That feels really good. Now, here's the big one. We're gonna do the big one. Take a really big pain in the butt moment, you know, like, I had a fight with so-and-so. I had a this with so-and-so. I am feeling the energy of this. That person hurt my feelings. Take one of those moments. Don't dump, dive into it. We're going to go, hmm. Because remember, this person said what they said, or this person did what they did, and then you receive the energy of it. And that energy triggered Emotional program, right? Oh, goodness. I feel that I have been blah, blah, blah. But remember, there's this moment where you choose to have this I feel moment, or you can switch it and go, is this what I really feel? Now, this is a super, super mindfulness training. <laughs> and, you know, even I screw it up. Because then I'll remember in the back, oh, yeah, I didn't need to do that. Oh, yeah, okay. So um, here's the training wheels version. You take the moment. You kind of turn it into a video in your mind. Or you, you replay the scene. Only you're doing it like you're watching reality TV and not your world, not your life. So you're getting a layer of distance from it. See how you could react differently. See a moment where you could choose to react differently from it. Okay. And when you see that moment, insert the moment into it and turn the whole business free. That's called rewriting history. <laughs> it works. 
because you're doing it in your body. If you don't want to believe it, that's fine. But if you do want to believe it, that's also fine. Also notice that when you really get that energy going of that feeling, you'll notice it's going to echo in a certain part of your body. So if you feel that, notice that echo, and if you feel that coming in another situation, that's how you know what's wrong, what's untrue for you. It's a really good indicator what is untrue because you've already gone through the scene and your mind, your mind already knows how it's going to feel. So that's number one way to feel untruth. You pick up an old scene, notice what feeling untruth feels like. If you notice it coming, that's your untruth. Good. Yeah, that was a very quick thing they said. If you have any questions, that's one that they want to discuss more. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are getting towards the end. We started a little late, so we're getting towards the end. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to warn you, in three, two, one. I am going to unmute, if that's okay with you. All right, three, two, one, you're unmuted. Yay! So, if anybody has any questions, feel free to speak. Nope, okay. A recording of the first uh, one that you said you didn't have a recording of would be helpful. I don't remember which, it was the first one. Okay, well, I'll go through it and um, find what things I need to do a recording of. I do have a recording of the grounding. I do have a recording of that. Yeah, it was the one right after that. Okay. I will make a note right now. And that one is heart space exercise. Okay, I will do that. Good. Thank you. That's, that's done. Any other questions about how to, I mean, this was, it's going to take a minute for that part to sink in. We still have more to go, but I, I wanted to stop right now in the moment and say that Creating distance from a big event really, 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 really helps to learn from it and then release it. Because that was the, the part of the, you know, what do these emotions mean? What is this message? Clearly, we can walk around and tear our heart, hair out and say, oh, he hurt me, he hurt me, I'm mad, I'm mad. No, we got to know why we feel that way and where it went. You know, these were messages. They're here to teach us. So let's get taught already. Um, moving on, we're going to teach you, um, guys, what do you want to teach them? Ah, uh, dowsing with your body. Okay. If you already know how to do it, I'm sorry, but I want to teach you how to douse with your body. If, if you, if you guys already know, say yes, everybody knows. Okay. You can either say yes or, um, cause you're unmuted. Except yes. For Okay, you already know it, how to douse with your body. Good. Um, everybody else know? No. Good. Then we'll go over it very quickly. There, there are three, three ways to douse with your body. One, muscle testing. Muscle testing 101 is, and, and trust me, you can lie every time with this. Make a ring. There it is. Ring with your right hand. Make a ring around that with your, well, actually make a ring with your dominant hand. Mine is my right hand. Make a ring with your uh, weak hand. And I want you to think the word no, 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 and only hold your weak hand strong enough to resist for a second. That is how you calibrate no. So you take your dominant hand, and then you take your subordinate hand, your weaker hand. You put your weaker hand in the hole. You only resist enough to have a slight resistance when you think no, no, no. And calibrate how strong that muscle was. I mean, you're not holding on for dear life. You're just holding enough to have a little resistance and then break when you think no. Now take that same level 
and think yes, 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 yes. And notice it is much, much, much stronger. Now I'm gonna go back, think, no, look, and it broke. So that's muscle testing 101. There's the one you can do with your finger too. There's the one people do with their arm. But that one, the ring one is the easiest one to do if you're just learning. Uh, the other one is the sway test, the Indian sway test, where you stand up and you think the words, yes, 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 yes. And if you're grounded, you sway forward. And if you're not grounded, you sway backwards. <laughs> and then opposite, you know, no, 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 no. You'll sway backwards if you're grounded and you'll sway forwards if you're not grounded. There you go. That is muscle testing and sway test. Sway test is the hardest one to lie to yourself with. And it's also a really fun way to check to see if you're grounded. <laughs> so you can stand there and think the word yes, 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 yes. And if you sway forwards, you know you're not grounded. And then when you sway back, you find out you're grounded. It's a, it's a fun one to check. And then you'll do your grounding exercise. <laughs> and that really works. So. Those are some of the ways to know and feel the energy of where things are right and where things are wrong. That comes with practice. And then we also covered on how to release things if you need to release them. And we're going to end today. Guys, how do you want to end it? We want to end it. And I'm going to um, go ahead and mute everybody so you don't have to be deaf and quiet. Okay, good. Okay, the guys want to talk about um, closure and closing. Oh, that's good. Um, in a session with me, I call it the benediction. But it's closure slash closing. When you open your energy like this, or when it has been opened by others, um, you must uh, disconnect and or seal your field. Really? Yes, they said. <laughs> That's where you run into problems if you don't do that. So if you've come into a, um, an altercation and, you're, and your energy has gotten all whooped up, you know, or you've gotten really mad or really angry or something's happened, there's a storm going on, and all you can see is the storm. Um, remember to use that storm clearing exercise I sent from the last one. Um, you've got to disconnect and make sure your field is sealed and whole. And here's the exercise to do that. Really? Here's an exercise? Yes. Okay, here's the exercise. This is really new to me. Good. This is the exercise to do that. Um, call yourself back to your body and you do that. Oh, with the balloon. You pull the balloon down into your body. Did I teach you guys that already? I think I did about finding yourself and bringing yourself back to your body, yes. Uh, I'm gonna say yes. Um, if I didn't, email me, I will. So first you bring yourself back to your body, then you say to your body, this is me, the rest is out here. And you, ah, you push things out and you smooth your whole circle of field. Wow, you do? Yes. So you're going to take your whole mind's eye and smooth above and below and around. That's exactly what I'm doing to people. I am actually smoothing and clearing their fields. I didn't know that. Oh, how cool. So you want to take your hand or your mind. You don't have to do your hand, but I'm kind of visual. And you just take a 360 around your body and smooth your whole field and press it and make sure it's all whole and clear and stitch up any areas that need to be stitched. And if you can't see it, you can feel it with your fingers. There's no resistance at all. It's like, whoo, wide open air. Close it up. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, good. So, yes, we have a 12 foot circle around our body. Sometimes it's smaller, sometimes it's bigger, but it helps to have our field clean. That's essentially a self aura cleanse. That's what they just said. It's a self aura cleanse. You don't need somebody else to clean your aura. You can do it yourself. And that was it. 
Okay. Um, is there anything else? They said no. So we're going to stop there. And um, ah, the way I say as above, so below, as below, so above, across all time, space, dimensions, and realities into this now moment of what we wanted, that is what I am doing when I am cleaning your, your field and setting the intention. Um, you can say whatever you want, but essentially I clean my field and I set my intention to be X is how you, how you do it. Uh, and for, for now, I would say my intention is that all people can expand and become exactly who they choose to be with no inhibiting and no um, self-eluding uh, thoughts. Because <laughs> that's what they are. They're, just, they're, they're deluding and eluding. That's what they are. So... I'll leave it any questions. Feel free to put them in the type if you have any questions. And I will uh, put the recording in your inbox when you wake up in the morning, as well as the recording of the, um, the first one. The next one, I'll have to make a recording. I haven't done that yet. OK. I'll wait for a second. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.